Hello, I'm Tactical Pascal. Welcome to the channel. I hope this finds you all safe and well. In this GF17 tutorial mission, I'm going to show you how to take this and this to do that. This video is going to cover the use of the LD10 anti radiation missile so you can go Sam hunting in the fantastic GF17 Thunder. The LD-10 is an anti-radiation missile, or ARM. It's a modified version of the GF-17's active radar-guided missile, the SD-10. You can carry four LD-10s and it can be launched in three modes, active, passive and self-protect, and I'm going to cover each of these modes in this tutorial. It's got a range of about 40 nautical miles, but that's of course dependent on your speed and altitude, so the higher and faster you are, the further that weapon's going to go. And I'll do a little demonstration uh, of how to actually use the weapons. So, first up we have active mode. Now, active mode requires you to designate a SPI or sensor point of interest. This can be done with any sensor that you've got on board the GF-17, whether you're using the radar or a target pod, or you can use the HUD, but you can simply do it by putting in a waypoint. So if you know roughly where the threat emitters are, you can drop in a waypoint, and then that's going to be the SPI for active mode. Personally, I find it to be a little bit less effective than passive and self-protect, but it's there. If you want to use it, you can. Personally, I don't really. Next up, we have passive mode. Now, in passive mode, we simply launch the missile towards an area that's got radar emitters operating, and it's going to fly off and engage the first thing it finds. So if you think about um, an AIM-120, when it's launched in the Mad Dog configuration, it's basically launched active. So it looks for something, the first thing it finds on its uh, radar it's going to attack. Same thing with the LD-10 in passive mode. The first thing that it finds, it will engage. Now, passive mode is quite useful if you're flying towards an area and there's lots of enemy SAMs in it. You can just mag them off one, turn, run away, see what you hit. Turn in, do it again, turn in, do it again. You can do that four times and hopefully you'll catch those emitters. And the last mode we have is self-protection mode. Now, I use this quite often because I'm an idiot and I get too close to SAMs. But basically what self-protection does is the LD-10 will target emitters that have locked onto you. It's easy to use, so you'll see that little threat emitter turning red and the warning or tracking, tracking, tracking. At that point, you can ripple off your uh, magnum or you can fire off your magnum towards that and it will engage the highest threat emitter to you. So fire, turn, run away. Good news is it's got an LD-10 flying towards it. Bad news is you are enough to get in within tracking range or launch range of that uh, SAM system. So yeah, self protect is used there to protect you when you've done, well, when you get a little bit too close. So personally, I use passive and then go off into self protect when I've been an idiot. Actually, using the LD-10s themselves is quite simple, but you must remember to obviously load them and then update the data cartridge. Now, there is an activation time of about three minutes for the LD-10s. Now, you can, I say cheat, you're not really cheating, it's DCS, you're not actually going to shoot someone if you fire a weapon on the ground, but you can put your master arm on when you're on the ground, and then you can power up the LD-10 before you taxi and take off. But best practice is, as you lift off the runway and start to fence in, turn on your um, master arm and then turn on the power button for the LD-10s. Now you're going to have to wait three minutes so it's a good idea to get that done sooner rather than later so get your fence checks done nice and early otherwise you're going to be flying towards threat emitters and you're not ready to shoot at them because you forgot to turn on your LD-10. So what I'll do now is I'll demonstrate how I use them to destroy a couple of emitters. I've just loaded up a quick mission here and um, you can use it or you can uh, fly on any of the servers for tactical DCS. And we have our uh, threat emitter ranges. Uh, the higher up the range number, the more threatening it is. So come and join us at tactical DCS. I'll include that link in the description below. And of course, don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel. And tell me in the comments below if you use the Jeff, if there's a different way you do um, your seed missions or your dead missions, or if you're new to the Jeff, what else you want to see. But anyway, let's get cracking and I'll show you how I use them. So here we are in the cockpit of the GF-17. Now the loadout I have currently is two wing tanks and four LD-10 anti-radiation missiles. Now it's a good enough loadout for doing some seed or dead missions. So if you want to suppress the enemy or destroy them in place. But what I like to do in my preferred loadout is I don't like having, if you look in the, uh, look there, there's no centerline pod. Now I could add a targeting pod or I could go for my 
preferred loadout. So I'm going to speak to the ground crew. Let me open the canopy in preparation for uh, loading my DTC. So I'm going to eject that. Now, I'm going to say rearm refuel. Now, I'm going to take one center line, and then on the wings, I'm going to take some SFWs. Let's turn that warning down now so we don't hear it. Okay, so what I like to do is fly with the LD-10s, fire them and take out the SAM emitters and then follow that up if we want to with some cluster bombs. So they'll come on now. See that 800 litre tank's on. There's the SFW on the right wing. There's the SFW on the left. And they'll tell me rearming complete any second. Any second now. There we go. So now they've done that, I'm going to get them to update the DTC. We don't forget to do that. Copy. Updating the DTC now. Updating the DTC now. So as soon as that's done, it's gone in the cartridge DTC slot. Update complete. Okay, DTC is gone in, so I'm going to start closing the canopy. DTC is locked, so I'm going to click all and enter. So I'm going to reload all the data from the DTC. So it's transferring everything in there. Once that's done, we will get another warning that we are warning. configured incorrectly. There it is. So we're going to switch to AG. Now we are ready to rock. This is how I like to fly the GF-17 configured for a seed or dead mission. Now all we need to do is taxi and then get ready to go. So what I'm going to do straight away is go into air to ground mode. Now it says here, air to surface one, it's got GB6. I'm not going to start with that. I'm going to start with my LD-10s. I can't power them on because my master arm isn't on. But what I can do, master arm on, and bring the power on. And we've got an alignment time for the, uh, for the missile. So we see there, it's about three minutes. So we can taxi out and head towards our start point. And once the weapons are powered on, so the LD-10s require that little bit of time, like I said earlier, to be powered on. And once that's done, we can fly off towards our target site and engage them active, passive, or self-protect. Personally, I don't like to use active because I find it to be a little less uh, than successful. What I do like to do, though, is use it in uh, self-protect mode or passive. So fly towards the area where SAMs are emitting launch them at 40 miles from a high level and then relax because I'm not getting shot at by their emitters. So I'll take again because it's heavy loads, those trailing edge flaps will go down. Roll steady, those wheels steering off, stamp on the brakes. Bring the power on now. And off we roll. On down 80, 90, 100, 120, 130, gentle pull back in the stick. Up we go 10 degrees. Let her settle. Bring the gear up. Get that AOA up to about 10 degrees. As we get over 250 knots, I'm going to bring those trailing edge flaps up. So come up and off out we go to war. Now we've got our steer points here, so we're going to go to, uh, let's go steer one, so flight plan one, turn. And we can see there is up off to our right, so we'll take a turn and start climbing up towards. Now, because it was a hot start, I didn't put in my data link codes, nor did I enter myself into the net, so I'll do that now. There we go, we'll fly up towards our point of engagement with whatever emitters are near steer point number one. We're rolling out now, 60 miles away. We're going to get a bit of altitude. Like I said earlier, the higher you are, the faster you are, the further those LD-10s are going to go. Got a range of about 40 miles on a good day. So that's just what we'll do. So again, I don't really want to be active. I'm going to go to passive mode. Now I don't choose what it engages. But what we can see here is alignment process is still going on. 
So we're 10 seconds before we can launch them. So if anything locks me up now, I'll have to wait until that timeout has been done. So it's a good a good idea as soon as you're airborne, or like me, I mean, you don't, you're not flying a real JF-17, so you can put the Master Arm 2 on. Just don't fire anything on the ground. So it's aligned. We're in passive mode. We could go self-protect. I save that for when I'm in a bit of trouble. So I'll just leave it at passive. And then we'll fly out towards steer one and I'll pick this up when we get some emissors. So we go being detected by an SA6 and we are 50 miles to run to steer point one. So what I could do, I'm a bit far away, I don't think that's uh, within steer point one, I think that's a little bit further away. So I'm going to keep going up to about 30,000 and then I'll decide if I'm going to launch as I approach steer number one. So flying up now, S23, burner still on. That's the reason we take that certain line fuel tank, is because we burn through the fuel. Because we can't carry a lot of fuel because uh, we're too heavy with our SFWs. So it's a good idea if you're doing seed, uh, get comfortable with tanking. You can take off light and then go and fill up your, uh, fill up your tanks. So flying here now, we're 42 miles away from steer one. I'll leave it at about 27,000 actually. That'll be a high enough height for the LD10s to get a good bit of legs. So we keep flying towards, only an SA6 for now. Nothing much to worry about. Now we have four LD10s, I could fire one off now passive. Or we could bait it, we could wait until it locks us and then fire. Basically our job is seed or um, deed is, I keep saying deed, just because I'm Scottish, or dead, is we want that target, or we want the emitter not to be uh, ready to target our friendly aircraft. So our mission is to silence those SAM sites. Nothing more, nothing fancy, just silence the SAM sites. Right, that's close enough, so we'll get autopilot on, altitude 2700, boom, and then we'll start a gentle little climb. Now the emitter's just tracking us just now, it isn't actually locked on ready to fire at us, it's just aware that we are there, and also we're aware it's there. So what we'll do now, is I reckon we're getting close enough to fire at that. It's an SA6 range isn't great, but I want to fire at it first so I'm not on the back foot, so I'm just going to go Magnum. And we'll see how our LD10 gets on. Flying off. Off it goes in passive and it's found the SA6. That's now offline. Now what we can do is as we approach steer one, if there was anything nasty there, we can switch to self-protect mode. And if anything was to activate underneath us and go red straight away, we could roll, fire, and away we go. Simple, isn't it? So what we'll do in this next example is engage the targets in self-protect mode. So again, I've just started in the air. I'm flying towards some targets. So I'm just input my data link here. I always like to do that. It's a force of habit. So first thing is I'm going to switch to air to ground mode. And then I'm going to look over towards my right-hand side. Now let me pause it there. We can see on the right hand side that we have an SA8 and an SA6 that is tracking us. They've not locked on us yet, but they are tracking us. So we need to do something about it. So what I'm going to do is poke the bear. I'm going to fly towards them and I'm going to engage them. Uh, it's easy. That's all you need to do is fly towards, let them bait you. So I'll switch over now left hand side. I'm going to change the mode from active. I can go passive. And I can launch one off at them because nothing's tracking me so they will launch and then it'll the missile itself will decide which one of those it goes for or I can go to self-protect mode now when one of these cheeky wee beasties locks me up all I need to do is fire off so I'm just checking there interval zero quantity one the power's on it's all aligned I'm ready to go so if that goes red that means it's locked me up and I'm going to get ready to give it the good news by stuffing an LD10 right up its tailpipe, or right down its throat as it is rather, with this. So I'm just going to continue to fly along and see what happens. So flying in, not too worried yet, no big deal. 
Now, there we go, SE10, sorry, SE8 has locked me up. So, Magnum, he gets one for the good news, and then all I need to do is make a little manoeuvre and turn away. So that LD10 is automatically going for the SE8. Now the SE6 has now locked me up. Now I was hoping that the LD10 would go for the SE6, but again, self-protection mode, it decides what's most threatening. And as the SE8 locked me up, when I fire, you'll notice that heads off to my left there. So I'm not convinced, or I don't know, if it's gone for the SE8 or the SE6. So I'm just moving my uh, radar cursor there. I'm trying to put an active mode, so I've put down a SPI and I've fired that missile off active. So I put the SPI in front of the SE6, so hopefully that set, or the third LD10 I've just launched there, hopefully that one's going to target the SE6 as it reaches the activation point, or the uh, the steer point rather. So the SE8 went quiet, SE6 is still there. So then all we need to do, I'll put on the autopilot and then we'll watch this missile going in. Now this one misses entirely, I think that was the second one that was launched towards the SA-8 and that missed entirely. So then what we do is go back into passive, turn in, I mean I could be in self-protect mode here against this SA-6, but he's the only one there. Yep, he's still off to my left, beginning to get some warnings now. So he's launched at me, I'm looking for the elephant trunks coming up. There they are, straight ahead of me. So then we go Magnum, and then we start to turn away to bleed the energy of those missiles that are around to me. Now my LD-10 is going to be nice and fast, it's going to get there and it's going to take out that emitter before those missiles reach me. But, just to be sure, I'm going to bleed some energy, pop a bit of chaff out the back, and keep turning away. Now we've lost the smoke trails, so they're now um, kinetic, they are not being powered by the rocket motors, they've burned out. So I'm just looking for the actual little black telephone poles themselves, obviously it's not as big as an SA-2. There they are off to the left, passing harmlessly by me. I say harmlessly, that was pretty close to be honest. But the emitter for the SA-6 has gone quiet, so that has been a successful kill of the SA-8 and the SA-6. And I switched between the modes there and you've seen how quickly and how easy it is to switch between the modes. There's no faffing around with buttons, it's just tap tap, fire fire, easy peasy. So that's Seed in the Jeff. If you've got a different way of doing it, please let me know in the comments below and then I can maybe adjust it to a better way, but I find this way for me certainly works. Um, hopefully it's helped you guys that might not necessarily know how to do Seed or Dead in the Jeff. As always, come along and feel free to join us at Tactical DCS. We've got training servers up 24-7 in the EU and the US and we've got thousands of amazing people there. They're all willing to help each other out and have fun. We fly campaigns and all sorts, so you can use your trusty Jeff when we go off to war. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out the content that's coming soon on the channel, more on the Jeff, more on the F-18, and more on other things soon as well. Till next time, Tactical Pascal. Out.